Good morning and welcome to another riveting CAN diagnostic episode. In today's video, I'm going to show you a brief on the oscilloscopes that I use. Um, now, it doesn't mean I use these on a daily basis, um, but they do get used. All of these get used and they've all got their, um, their pros and cons. I'll go through some quick pros and cons, but this is by no means an in-depth video to any of these scopes. It's just a bit of, this is what I use. Some may surprise you. So we're going to start off with the um, the Pico, the 4425. I think is this the A? 4425A? No, just 4425. Um, with um, Pico Scope 7 Automotive. Should do this left-handed. Um, now, to be honest with you, I don't use this very often. One, it's not mine. It belongs to uh, Leon. Bodget and Leggett, shell tape to the Irish geezer. Um, I should be using it more, and when I have used it, it's been amazing. It's just the fact that I don't use it very often, and I'm not too quick at setting it up yet. And I'm simply get the laptop out, etc. etc. Next one is the, the Zeus um, snap on scope. Now I use this more often. Probably more than most of them, to be honest with you. Um, if anyone uses a Zeus or a Verus, or the, I don't know what the other one was called, the older one, um, you'll they're all the same, basically. The scopes all work the same. If you can use the older ones, you can use the newer ones. And then the Verdict M2, little handheld scope, um, little two-channel scope. Bloody brilliant little thing, that is. And then we've gone to some of the other ones. This is a CFRAM. 5020 um, analog oscilloscope now that may surprise some of you and then we'll go on to the big bad boy look at this <whistles> sexy innit hey look at that beautiful looks like it's come out of a bleeding Lancaster or something now this is a Heathkit service oscilloscope model 02 uh, no, 0s2 sorry this has got a massive massive um, Hertz at three megahertz, beast in it. I'll have, show you all in action in a minute. Now, believe it or not, but this one here, twenty mil, uh, twenty megahertz, is the same as that. Would you believe it? No, no, they're not the same speed. No, it doesn't have the same sample rate. No, it can't do this, that, and the other. Um, but it just goes to show everyone looking at the scopes, thinking they want the more. The better than the megahertz, the better the scope. I mean, it doesn't really mean all that much, to be honest. Um, but I'm going to plug into plug them all into this little thing here, lent to me by um, Laj Snap On Rep. Um, put a link to his Facebook page in the description. Um, I'm just going to go through just going to go through some of the different scopes and just show you what the signals look like. I'm going to use the same signal for all of them. Uh, obviously. This isn't going to be showing any can, so we're going. To, we asked. We will be using a digital signal, um, but it won't be can, which won't be anything that fast. So I'm going to use um, a Hall Effect uh, wheel speed sensor, so basically um, square wave, um, a square wave signal. So they'll all be digital. So first of all, I'll get set up on the Pico. All right, so we're set up on the Pico. Um, I'm going to turn channel B off. We won't be needing that. And then um, right, I'm going to get this done automatically. Right, so when we come on to it, basically it's going to click auto setup straight away. And then I'm going to increase the scale 20 volts. And here we have it. This is our um, digital signal from the ABS or wheel speed sensor, whatever you want to call it, it's a digital hall effect sensor. Um, that's what it looks like in the Pico. You can see, you can see the um, the tops and the bottom of the waveform beautiful. Um, if we zoom in, you can see all this fuzzier.
look at that. Just a bit of interference, uh, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the scope, in fact, far from it. Um, just shows you how how good this scope is at picking up um, how good the scope is at picking up even the tarnished detail, even if it is interference. Right, so we're going to go on to the, uh, the Zeus. Okay, um, a lot easier for me to set up this Zeus is, um, mainly just because of how often oh, you have to use it. It's just second nature to me to set this up. Obviously, the more I, the more time I spend with the, uh, the Pico, the better I am at using it. And every time I just about get to, to figure it out, they bring out a new um, new software and have to learn it all again. Um, software is really not my thing. I'm more hardware hardware orientated than software. Um, but you can see the difference between this and the um, the Pico. We don't have the the sample rate enough to to get these tiny um, dips at the top. We still have some fuzz, some interference, top and bottom. Um, Again, that's that's nothing to worry about. That's not a problem. Um, you're just seeing all with this. You're seeing everything you need to see. No more, no less, really. Um, so I'm just gonna turn on the M2. It's gonna be a bit more tricky to show you. Okay, so we are set up on the M2. Um, let's just bring the time in a little bit more. One millisecond, and there we are. Is there? Well, we're going to call it a PWM from now on because it's just easy to keep saying real speed sensor, digital effect sensor. You can see the difference between this and the obviously the, the bigger scopes. Um, it all about it's all about screen real estate. Um, the bigger the screen, the more information you're going to be able to see. Um, but believe it or not, this little scope is by far my most used scope. Um, just for this alone, just just to know, do I have a PWM? Is my um, such control valve getting a signal? Is my ABS getting a signal? Am I getting a sine wave? Am I getting a digital wave? Blah 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 blah. blah. This is very very quick to set up. Um, it's not cumbersome. I can get it underneath dashes. I can get it under cabs, under wheel arches. I mean, try setting all this up underneath um, underneath a cab on a lorry. It's very difficult. Um, and I can even, if I wanted to, I can capture the waveform with this and look at it on there. Um, to be honest, I think it's a bit of a gimmick. I've only ever done it once just to prove that it works. But you can do it if that's if that's what you want. Um, like I said, by far, this is my most used scope. Um, now we're going to go on to the, the analog scopes. Um, and I'm going to show you the same, the same uh, signal with these little bad boys. Right, so I've turned it on, and um, now this has got a, it's got a tube in the back of it, so it's going to take some while to load up. I say load up; it's, it needs to heat up really. Um, so we can adjust the position up or down. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to widen this. Get you a bit closer so you can see the um, the on off switch. You can just about see the um, where it actually switches from on to off, the up and down, the vertical lines. Very difficult to see that is on an older scope like this. Maybe if I widen it a little bit, slow the time base down. Again, very tricky to see digital signal. Um, on an analog scope um so we look at that right i'm gonna quickly set up the the heath kit um and then i'm gonna to explain to you why i have these scopes and what i use them for okay so i'm gonna turn the crt on Takes a bit of time, you can see the ball coming in the middle. Ooh, spooky. Right, now this is going to take me a while to set up. Um, probably the worst thing about these scopes is setting them up.
Right, I'm gonna get this done and I'll bring you back in. Right, so this is probably best. I'm gonna get a digital waveform on um, on the OS2. We slow the speed down in the wheel. Speed it up. As you can see, the scopes have come an awful long way. I mean, this scope is probably late 60s, very early 70s. Um, but still, it has its place, and I'm going to tell you where these places are. Now, it's probably no surprise to you that it's not an automotive. Um, I don't only do cars, lorries, vans, whatever, or ECUs. I also do some analog stuff, so we're talking amplifiers. Uh, um, old analog rectifiers, tubes, stuff like that. Let's see a walk on my drift now. So you can make some make some really pretty patterns. Yeah. Wee. Um I'll make some patterns with this one as well, shall we? Right, yeah, sorry. I'm a bit carried away here. I like playing with scopes. Um, so, yeah, these are primarily working with amplifiers, um, analog signals, um, so sound wave, sine wave, things like that, um, to make sure that you've got a proper output. Um, looking at high voltage, low voltage sides on the boards, stuff like that. Um, I would never use these for automotive scopes. Um, obviously, there it's incredibly uh, difficult to set them up for a start, and even then, you're not going to be getting any high frequency signals out of these. Um, like you, you've got no sample rights or anything like that, so you're not. We're not talking flex rays with this sort of stuff. I'd be very surprised if you could even catch um, a K line or something slow like that. Um, like I say they can barely catch um, the waveform of um, an ABS sensor. look at the one on the right that's as best that's you know that's as good as you're going to get with um with that with a digital a digital thing um we can let's put a sine wave on it and I'll show you what i mean by a bit better so that's an analog gate but you can see it's a lot lot better um just focus a little bit a lot better than a digital signal. These are what these are made for, really. So that that could be an output for um for a speaker or for an amplifier or anything like that. Um, so that's what these are used for. Um, in fact, I'll put a sine wave on this one as well, just so you can compare the difference. And there we are. Here's the analog signal. That's fast. Just slow it down. Speed it up. So you can see they definitely have their place. They're just not an automotive field. You won't want to lumber this bleeding thing. Look at the size of it. Um, underneath a wheel light to check an ABS sensor. But these are some of the scopes I use. Um, so it's not all about um, how fast they are, how great they are, how big or small they are. Different scopes have different uses. Um, so by far, most favourite one is the M2, just because of how quick and easy it is to pick up and use. Then it would be the Verus, and then obviously the Pico. Um, but these little scopes, the analog scopes, definitely have their place um, in the well in the electronic fields. So I hope somebody's found this interesting. Look, I'll go into depth into more detail about the scopes, but to be honest with you, I think this video is going to be boring enough as it is. So until next time, ta-da!